distinguished colleagues, our agenda today is, is really great, and the speakers are highly representative. So how can we gather different clinics, different cultures in Moscow under one roof? How to make the life of a, a mega city, which is quite difficult, but uh, more interesting uh, and beneficial, not only f to the patients who get uh, high technological advice, advanced medical uh, care, but also f doctors having a great experience in meeting in greatest international clinics. Today, we have great guests and speakers. Mikhail Yugai, head of the Moscow International Medical Cluster, I hope that he will uh, give an introduction. And also, Katerina Timofeeva, partner uh, and uh, managing director, Boston Consulting Group. Uh, Professor Zefro Stein, uh, head of Adassa Clinic, Israel. John San Juan, professor of Budong Hospital, uh, Seoul uh, National University. And uh, uh, Elena Kaplai, uh, or RP. EA Deputy Director, Russia, and uh, Mikhail, could you please uh, open this session, tell how you managed to get together such great people in the Moscow Medical Cluster, and what are your plans for the future? So, uh, quite quickly, I would like to remind you of our project. So why are we doing it? We believe that all the future economic development uh, will uh, depend on the human uh, capital, and this includes education and health care. Number two, we believe that medicine today uh, doesn't have any borders. There are no countries. There are just people. And we want to unite people in our cluster and all the medical people. Uh, concerning uh, education and science having no border. We believe in it and because this uh, will be responsible for the future development of Russia. So the project is aimed at the following. We have special territory in Skolkovo. It has about 60 hectares. Uh, this is the place where international clinics can go uh, and uh, make their copies I mean, the doctors coming there do not have to approve uh, their graduation certificates here in Russia because sometimes it's a problem. People can just come and work. They can use the same medical technologies, uh, medicine and equipment, which is not registered uh, in Russia. Even in this case, they can use it, and they can use the models of medical uh, care, starting from logistics to medical protocols they use in their clinics. So, uh, 2024 uh, is the starting point uh, when we're going to have uh, 15 to 20 different clinics. and international clinics. Uh, there is a myth saying there will be only international doctors working. This is not true. The amount of international doctors will be not more than 30 percent. The rest of the colleagues uh, will come from Russia and will work in Russia as well. So I think that will be quality uh, exchange between different models and uh, cultures of medicine of different countries. The participants of the project for today are as follows. Hadassah Medical, Israel. The CEO uh, is here, Professor Stein. Bundang is the clinic of this uh, National Republic, uh, Clinic of Seoul. The former president of this clinic is here, John San Hoon, the professor, who is still the inspirer and the ideologist of the project. Roman Fernandez uh, is another participating clinic from Spain. It will start operating there as soon as we have uh, room for that. Number four clinic is Arpea 
represented by Liana Kawai. It's a very interesting rehabilitation uh, chain uh, from France having hundreds of rehabilitation centers, mostly. Uh, they work in Europe, but they have a representative uh, in China and in South America. So they are uh, going internationally now. We are carrying negotiations with the University Hospital of Strasbourg and also the clinics from uh, Spain and Italy. We didn't start to focus on them at the very beginning, but now we can see this great potential there. Based on what we have today, we've planned our first line clusters in the central square, and around there will be the clinics. We are projecting uh, the other clinics. The first cl line clinics are practically constructed, and in two years, we'll push all this. So we're trying to make things beautiful planning the positioning and the placement uh, of the facilities uh, is uh, made by international architects. So we want to make the whole environment uh, healing. Uh, even the atmosphere there should, should heal. And everything should be beautiful. Uh, diagnostic center uh, of the Hadas. Clinic uh, is a pilot project, so uh, come to see it. You're kindly invited. And the second pilot project will be an oncologic, oncologic hospital of Hadassi Clinic. And now I would like to give the floor to our guests. Thank you so much, Mikhail. So we're starting our session of today, and I would like to ask Ekaterina Timofeeva to declare it open. Let me once again remind you, she's the managing partner of uh, Boston Consulting Group. So, Catherine, my question is as follows. How does the, uh, the community assess this cluster. I know that Boston uh, Consulting Room uh, has uh, made a questionnaire, so would you please share the results with us today? Thank you so much. Good morning, dear colleagues. Yesterday, during the plenary, uh, Mayor Sergei uh, Sabanian spoke a lot about uh, uh, all the projects in Moscow being customer-centered and customer-oriented. And uh, so the projects we fulfill should be assessed uh, from the point of being important for uh, Moscovites and guests of Moscow. So we uh, conducted a questionnaire. The questions were as follows. What do you think about the project? What is most attractive for you? Uh, do you see any areas of improvement and which ones have you been to the first clinic of the cluster, MMC, uh, MMCI? Uh, uh, but uh, the good news is that the attitude of the majority of responders is positive and they specify the advantages which uh, were initially set up as the targets of this project. So we can see that uh, top one for all the Moscovites and Moscow area uh, people is accessibility for new methods of treatment. They see that uh, this is the place where you can get um, and get the most novel methods of treatment. Number two factor was that uh, it is uh, possible to get medical care in accordance with international standards. Uh, for most uh, medical areas, uh, these uh, guidelines, uh, the international guidelines, are assessed as uh, the best one. Factor three and five 
turned out unexpected to me, and that was the development of science and education, which was uh, seen as really important by our citizens. So the comments were that it is so important to develop science and education so that Russia goes on to be pioneering the topest country in these areas. And many people specify that it's good that our doctors can be trained together with the top international experts for some areas. Well, there are some factors uh, we need to develop further. And I hope that Mikhail, the team, and uh, we all together will take uh, all this as an action plan to improve uh, uh, efficiency of the project and its attractiveness. So, uh, the opportunity of being treated uh, uh, within the national health care system uh, is what people would like to have. Uh, many responders say that uh, this project should be accessible to all uh, kinds of population, otherwise we will not improve the medicine in this country. Transport accessibility is another disadvantage for today, another challenge we need to improve, but I, but, but I hope this will be met quite rapidly. Uh, one more important factor, people would like to have more specialization areas, the oncology and rehabilitation specified by uh, Mikhail are certainly core, but people would prefer to have more clinics, more areas, and more specialists. Let me not highlight other factors. You may look at them here. But this is a good action plan, as I see it. And the last but not the least I would like to share with you is the attitude of the responders of the first uh, clinic, Kadasa, which was uh, launched September 9 last year. And more than 70% of responders uh, assessed that uh, positively as an advantage. And these were either people who visited it or people who heard about it. Uh, Israeli medicine is percepted very well here as a quality mark, as a, just the highest standard. Uh, brand Kadasa is also well known in Russia. Many patients went to Israel to Hadassah clinics, and they expect these, uh, well, as top standards here. Patients' experience, uh, I would like to highlight. So, I mean, the patients who uh, went to Hadassah clinic, they uh, specified the atmosphere, which was so positive, enhancing, uh, well, the spirits. And also, the responders highlight uh, the topest uh, specialists, uh, professionals the clinic managed to attract to Russia. And I would like to give the floor to Professor Zeev Rothstein to share with us what they do to make this clinic so great and to produce such uh, positive emotion. Natalia, you would probably also want to say something. Thank you so much, Ekaterina. I think it's really good news, uh, despite the fact uh, they've only started to uh, have uh, patients uh, a bit more than a year. Uh, well, the uh, attitude is so good. We can see uh, the uh, indications, which are so good. And I would like to give the floor to Professor Zev Rothstein, CEO of Hadassah Clinic in Israel. I would like the professor to share the main principles of the Israeli health care to tell us in short about one of the oldest and most famous Israeli clinics in Hadassah about doctors' education, science, and uh, innovation techniques. And also, I would like you, the professor, to share your plans, how the clinic is planning to develop further in Russia and the territory of the International Medical Cluster. Uh, you have eight minutes, professor, and the floor is yours. Um, the wireless.
One, two. Okay, it's better to stand. I feel more free. Uh, thank you very much for inviting me, and uh, I'd like to thank the mayor of uh, Moscow to invite us to participate uh, in the uh, Skolkova project, which is for me, it's a kind of the future is already here. Uh, with your permission, you know, uh, I'd like to uh, point out the uh, Israeli type of uh, high-tech nation and uh, with a lot of innovation in the uh, fields of medicine that we can incorporate immediately and we already started it uh, in Skolkovo here in Moscow. So instead of the Moscovites going abroad to Germany, uh, other countries or to Israel uh, to be treated, they can have the Israeli medicine here in Moscow and that's uh, for me it's a high value. If you are speaking about Hadassah and I was asked about Hadassah, Hadassah is a monster, it's a big hospital consists of a couple of uh, campuses. Uh, all together is uh, around 1,500 beds. Uh, we divided into uh, more than 100 departments uh, and clinics and five, five, I would say, academic school that includes the, uh, of course, medical school, dentist school, uh, public health school, and then occupational school, nursing school, and so on and forth. It's a very academic center mainly non for profit but for health of the people who are going to be there and in charge on development of many many innovation in the fields of medicine we are stressing out i would say the importance of academic excellence of the research powerhouse and we have built in okay a lot of laboratories and a lot of places to perform deep research and basic research, and we are very proud of the clinical care that we are giving. Lately, we added a biotech ecosystem for youngsters inside Adasa, so they can come with their ideas and developing with the mentorship of Adasa, which already proved itself, and some of the innovation are already in the market. So, uh, the cutting edge of technology and the innovation our basis of uh, cell therapy, of uh, molecular imaging, molecular biology, digital medicine, and all these curses okay, are presented in ADASA and stands for high lucrative cutting edge technology, which is over. I like to point out, because we are sitting in kind of a urbanic meeting and the people are the important people, and lately we are facing, I would say, problem of cancer. You know that it's part of the modern life. It's part of the modern diet, lifestyle, and you know the places that, that we are living in. And that will serve me a kind of example of the capacity and capabilities that we are going to include here in Moscow. So the first point, which is for me, extremely important for Moscovites or for Tel Aviv people or Jerusalem people is to prevent cancer. And cancer, to a certain extent, is preventable disease. We can early detect and relieve the problem of dying from cancer, and we can actually intervene and uh, suggest vaccination against cancer. We started with it already. The problem of cancer, and that's extremely important, that we can detect uh, cancer when we had 10 on the 6 of cells, cancer cells in the body, which give us very slim chances of cure cancer. So all our efforts are going to early detect the cancer before it is detectable, before the symptoms started, before the people even know that they have cancer. And in Skolkova already from last year, we started with kind of checkups and trying to early detect cancer in people who think that they are healthy with no symptoms whatsoever in order to increase the chances of their cure. And then for different cancer, we have different examination. Part of it is already known to each one and part of it is very new and should be instituted as early as possible. One example, for example, until a couple of years, melanoma was a devastated disease. People used to die from it in less than six months. Today, it's not only that it's treatable disease, but we prepare vaccination against melanoma 
and we can save really people. And this is completely innovation that we have already in our center and it's been offered. More than that, we are speaking about the era of the genome. This is the game changer of cancer, understanding the genomic contribution to cancer and how to solve the issue. When we are speaking about it, today we are performing routine, the only part of the genome analysis. If you look here downstairs at the apple, if this is the old genome, we are doing exomes only, which is 1% of the genome. Ignoring the rest is like searching a needle under the lamp, when the needle can be everywhere else. By extending our ability and performing, not just, uh, I would say, exome, but we, we perform much more deeper DNA okay, analysis, we can come to different decisions and different treatment, and this is the most important one. Here we are speaking about the next generation, full deep genome sequencing, and that's okay, we can perform in 36 hours 48 full genomes, which give us the opportunity to screen the patients and to do it in real time. So to deduct, okay, conclusion from it. When we are speaking about autogenetics, we are speaking about molecular pathology. But this is not the pathology that we know. We are deepening our understanding in the pathology of different DNA, RNA, and proteins to sub-level of the molecules to understand more the contribution and identification of cancer. Give you an example. Medulloblastoma is a kind of a tumor of the brain. Usually it was treated as medulloblastoma. But without deep, I would say, sequencing, you cannot come up that medulloblastoma, in fact, is four different diseases that respond differently to the, tif to the treatment. And only by using molecular pathology, you can, up, can up, up, come up with the solution. And so on and forth. Lately, we started the magnet, which is deep sequences of 50 genes that involve in certain tumors of the lung. 50 different genes in one cancer that used to be treated equally, not now. So I evaluate that if we will add all these gene analysis for the different tumors okay, that people can come with, we'll find much more solution. And much more solutions mean precision medicine. We don't use a very wide chemotherapy today with our patients. It might kill the patient and not the cancer today. We know it. So we try to limit ourselves to very focused based on the molecular pathology and based on the full genome evaluation, okay, in order to find the solution for individual patients. Why do I tell you that? I'm telling you because we are looking for a target on every tumor and every patient. Those patients who will come to Skolkov will be fully evaluated in order to give them a relative advantage over the regular oncology. And we will suggest precision medicine. And you have to take in consideration that only in the late years of 1997, 1919, more than 300 different formulas for biological treatment of cancer was authorized by the FDA. So we have an arsenal full of new medication. The only thing that we have to do, find the right one for the right tumor, the right people. And this is extremely important. Immunotherapy, I don't know how much you heard about it, but it's extremely okay, important in cancer. And somehow the body ignore the cancer and let the cells propagate. We have to find the reason for that, identify and to treat. And luckily enough, 
okay? Nobel Prize in 2018 was given to two gentlemen, okay? Uh, that actually pointed out the importance of immunotherapy in cancer treatment. I'll focus right here, for example. A cancer cell is hiding himself having a protein named PD-1 on his membrane. So the T cell, the killer cell of the body, cannot touch the tumor. Once we found it out, and we block the PD-1 by anti-PD-1, which is commercially available today, we actually expose the cancer to the body immune system. Extremely important. And we are continuing research. Today, we are introducing not only immunotherapy, but cell therapy. You heard probably about the C19 CAR therapy and many more CAR chimeric antigen receptor cell uh, and we are deepening our understanding how to send killer cells to kill cancer cells. And we do it with different methods and it's available today. So, if we will continue this kind of really line, okay, of all this, uh, I would say, strategy against, okay, the cancer including genome editing, will come up with many more solutions that we have today. So let me actually finalize what I have to say, and, the, and this is the importance of being here in Russia. Remember, the knowledge is a big data that we accumulate from our patients, the genetics that we accumulate from our patients, and if you build together this big data, it will be the, the, I would say, the basis of developing new and focused medication for cancer for all the world. So in Skolkova, we are gathering the information of the patient, without names, of course, but the disease, the genetics, etc., and that will be used to develop new medication for cancer. Big data is a name, but behind it, it's a lot of science and a lot of scientific work is being done in order to conquer a cancer. Let me finish with Leo Tolstoy. If people tell you that you should live your life preparing for the future, do not believe them. Real life is found only in the present. Real treatment for cancer is the present. We shouldn't wait for the future to introduce it. And I'd like to thank you for all of us. Thank you very much, uh, Professor uh, Rothstein, Rothstein, for a wonderful lecture in which you showed all of the latest global advances in oncology. As the director of medical cluster, I was extremely ex excited to realize that uh, all of these innovations are being developed in, in our startups. We signed an MOU with the Moscow Medical Cluster, and we do believe that our innovative developers can implement the results of their research in the Moscow Medical Cluster, maybe even in Hadassah Clinic. Thank you very much. And I would like to give this floor to Mr. Johnson Wu, a professor from the Seoul National University from Bundan Hospital. So there'll be no presentation, but um, we would like to ask the man who is uh, the manager of one of the best and one of the flagship uh, clinics in uh, Korea. Professor Sangun, could you please tell us about how healthcare is organized in Korea? What kind of principles are used as the foundation of Korean healthcare? Uh, thank you very much. Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm very, very happy to be here with you. And uh, my hospital, Seoul National University Bundan Hospital, is very honored to join the Skol Copa project. Uh, let me start to introduce the, the healthcare system in Korea. After the Korean War, the South Korea was one of the poorest countries in the world, but the current economic size of the Korea is about the number 10 in the world, 
and the medical quality of the Korea is also upgraded as one of the best in the world. The most notable driving force was education and the innovation. From 1960 to 1990s to 40 years, doctors were eager to learn modern medicine from developed countries, and the national insurance system was introduced at 1977, which made doctors and the hospitals look for the effectiveness. Uh, after 20 years from 2000 to now, I would like to say innovation made Korean medicine as a having global competitiveness. We have a very well set medical delivery system in Korea, primary clinics and the secondary and the tertiary hospitals. Patients can select the hospital, select the doctors very easily uh, without a long waiting time. For medical expenses, government pay about 80% and the patient pay about 20%. For the high costing diseases like the cancer and the cardiac or cerebral diseases, patient pay less than 10%. And the national insurance fee is the dependent amount of the people of income and the low income population do not need to pay. So additionally, government provide the health checkup for all Korean people, depend on age and the gender. And then we also have many kinds of the private insurance. Uh, it's depend on the free market policy. And also, uh, Korean government is providing very special in management plans for the, the elderly population like dementia, or other disease, mental diseases. So by Bloomberg report, uh, the Korea is ranked at the top level in terms of the healthcare cost effectiveness among OECD countries. So, so the skull cover selected the excellent choice like Israel, France, Spain, Italy is also linked, uh, linked at the high top level. So, so I expect a brighter future Next step of the Korean medicine system uh, depends on the excellent human resource and the strong digital technology in Korea. So combining clinical capacity and the information communication technology, I believe we can lead the future of the medicine. So the, after that, let me introduce to my hospital shortly. So National University Hospital was the first Korean hospital adopted modern medicine and the leading Korea's medicine last 130 years. By shifting Korean Seoul financial center from the northern part of Seoul to the southern part of the Seoul, so you may know the Gangnam. So we opened a new Seoul National University Bundang Hospital at 2003 with the mission of the lead global standard. Uh, my hospital uh, opened with the world's first completely digitalized tertiary hospital, and the concept of a hospital is patient-centered. Hospital structure is patient-oriented, and our homegrown medical information system, named Best Care, is now recognized as the world's best system. So uh, we are especially strong in minimal invasive surgery for cancer patients in the cardiovascular, neurological, and the spine and joint surgeries. The Seoul National University Bundang Hospital is the only hospital offers clinical outcomes and the patient safety measurement to the public. We are opening all the clinical outcomes by the homepage of the publication. And recently, we opened our new research campus. As Hadassah mentioned, the R&D is very important in the future of the medicine. And we have the biggest research capacity in Korea. We invited many healthcare companies. We are supporting startups for healthcare R&D and business. And we are publishing more than 1,000 SI papers. And every year, more than 440 doctors are visiting for learn our high-end uh, cutting-edge knowledge in the system. 
So the, for the Moscow specialized program, we are operating the Global Medical Academy for Moscow clinicians and the Moscow CEO Academy. And recently, we opened the Moscow Nursing Academy. So my hospital is the most active hospital in Korea that uh, collaborate with the Moscow. So the, I was asked to mention what is a, a tool for effective control of the hospital. So using our homegrown system, Best Care, we are using clinical decision supporting clinical indicators, clinical data warehouses. And we are providing all medical data, personal health record, to our patients uh, the smartphone. So the, our system is very good. We, we are providing many medical applications for controlling e chronic disease like the diabetes and the hypertension. So uh, the, it, what is concept of the smart hospital in, in my hospital in Skolkov? I have dreamed to make the world the best hospital in Skolkov uh, even better than my hospital. Two important roles I'm thinking about in Skolkov are the, the best quality of medical service and the educational platform. New system is the, the I think the already Dadasa mentioned the very important thing is the high quality big data. Most case big advantage uh, to collect data because the most of the Moscow hospitals are public hospitals operated by Moscow City. So collecting this, collecting this uh, medical big data, including genetic data, and collecting, collecting life log data of the citizens and the environment data, the city will be happy, hospitals will be happy, and the people will be happy. I think uh, the, this kind of system can upgrade the and to prepare the future of medicine is Skolkov. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, John. I just maybe wanted to ask you what kind of um, smart hospital principles will you implement in the Skolkov um, uh, clinic when we are talking about the most advanced technologies? A smart hospital technologies are probably leading the way. So what uh, kind of smart hospital technologies can you use in Skolkov? Yes, uh, the system is the we are pretty artificial intelligence is embedded uh, depend on bio big data. I already proposed the Moscow City and the IMC to make the big data center. So the depend on data, the hospital system, our homegrown hospital system could, could provide the artificial intelligence to provide the best quality of treatment as well as to minimize error of the procedures. So the other thing, the very important thing is education, what I mentioned. So the education platform in Skolkov is very important. Uh, yesterday I actually proposed the IMC to make a smart operation room to teach doctors and surgeons, and not only for Skolkov or Moscow, but also all of Russia. And we needed to use virtual reality for teaching medical persons. We already made a pilot project and that it could be set up in Skolkov. Even before we open the hospital, we can implant this system to Moscow healthcare. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I would like to give the floor to Elena Kolai, and I have three questions for uh, Elena. The first question is, um, we would like to learn more about the history of uh, the largest rehabilitation uh, chain, or PEA. Ladies and gentlemen, to start off, I would like to thank our colleagues from uh, Moscow Medical Cluster for all of the work that they've been doing for the last two years. I would like to thank them for their endless energy and uh, for all of the effort that 
they put into this work, and this is daily work to bring new technologies to Russia and to make these technologies accessible and affordable to all of us, to me and you, to members of our family, and to, to all of our friends and relatives. Our company was founded by Jean-Claude Mario, a French doctor, back in 1989. Dr. Mario was a psychiatrist by training. He also specializes in organizing medical labor, medical space, and medical architecture. You know that new technologies emerge when these three components are combined. And the history started back in the day when a mayor of one city asked his advice to optimize a nursing home for the elderly. That's how Orte was founded in 1999. They decided to to uh, found a company that's named Clinia uh, that would be dealing exclusively with medical rehabilitation. Later, they had an IPO on the French uh, stock exchange. In 1995, uh, they founded the first uh, nursing home for the elderly in Italy. So today, the company works in the field of medical rehabilitation in neurology, pulmonology, cardiology, um, oncology, orthopedics, um, long-term care, and also such uh, things like patients in coma and long-term care. Thank you so much. So what are the principles, the high-tech uh, rehabilitation uh, of your clinic or PR is based? What is the difference of these approaches with the standard approaches? Well, or PIA is not represented just in France. It is represented in 16 countries of the world, yes. These are mostly European countries, but we've also launched our subsidiaries in Latin America and in China. And now coming to Russia is a central point for us. Rehabilitation Center uh, principle uh, starts on the medical bed and uh, it lots until the person is back to the environment the patient is used to. Medical rehabilitation is important as a, a principle of multidisciplinary teamwork. Everyone discusses uh, the patient and uh, the team is patient-centered. Today, all the areas of rehabilitation are present. Technology is another important issue. We attach a lot of importance to novel technologies who work with big companies, also with small startups. Uh, uh, your colleague represents Re uh, Israel. We also work with this Israeli company, which helps us to develop new technologies uh, with magnet uh, um, and um, uh, res, res, with MRI, um, which helps uh, for rehabilitation. All these technologies and nuclear technologies we want to drive to the centers of competence in Skolkova. I would like to specify one thing of the broad spectrum of rehabilitation. Which ones you would like to implement on the Moscow Medical Cluster, uh, at what order and which ones will be uh, accessible to the Russian patients. We are planning to make a broad rehabilitation, neurological rehabilitation, cardiological, pulmonological, after uh, malignant diseases, also rehabilitation after metabolism impairment, all these kinds of rehabilitation we need to represent in Skolkova. Well, people will not just have access to these novel technologies, but will create the center of uh, knowledge transfer. We are not planning 
just to make an aisle of high tech. We want to create a center for high tech and uh, scientific advancement and also a training center so that doctors and all the medical staff can be trained uh, these technologies in Skolkova. Thank you so much for his great presentation. So when do you think uh, the first department uh, is realistic to launch well? Uh, 2022 will uh, hopefully uh, receive the first patient. Uh, I mean, we'll be glad uh, to uh, have all the patients to accept. I hope. I wish all of you good health, but if something happens, we'll be glad to work with you and your families until you are back to the environment you are used to in good health. So, welcome. I would like to answer the question you started with, how we managed to uh, get all these people together. Actually, the talk is very simple. We need just to find the people who feel their uh, clinics are too little for them, their countries are too little for them, the current medicine is too little. So we want and we have people who want to go beyond all the borders. So this is the time we can ask questions to our participants. Dear colleagues, we have 10 minutes. If you have questions, please ask them. Following this, would end using this great opportunity, which is really unique. Unique people are here today with us. Good afternoon. Thank you so much for such interesting information. I have the feeling that the level of medicine and health care will develop further and will uh, improve further. I would like to ask one thing, and this is quite practical for me. How can we get to your clinic today? I think it's a question for me. Today, is things are very simple, you can come to Skolkova. So speaking about uh, transport accessibility, can uh, come by train from uh, uh, Belarus railway station and there are shuttles and buses from different areas. So this is uh, what transport accessibility is concerned. Uh, speaking about uh, being treated there, the clinic uh, is open for everyone. We have the funding, uh, so we use uh, uh, public funding and uh, private funding. Unfortunately, uh, we do not work uh, in the system of the of national health care, but uh, this is where we are planning to go uh, and where we will go. You can uh, apply on the website. My colleagues are not here, but you can do it easily. Thank you so much. Good afternoon, distinguished colleagues. My name is Valeria Petrasian. I'm an honored professor of Lomonosov University. By profession, I'm a chemist, uh, specialized in organic chemistry. But for many years, I've been doing on uh, chemical security. And for 26 years, I've been an ex UN expert in UN uh, chemical 
securities. For many years, I've been dealing with toxicology. My interest in this area made me to preventive medicine. And I'm really grateful to the organizers of this great session. And I would like especially to thank uh, Professor Ziev Rothstein for highlighting preventive medicine, for having called it number one and most significant stage of treatment. Uh, we've uh, seen the curve and we know stage three and four in oncology, uh, which is symptomatic when people uh, themselves go to clinics and say that uh, uh, they have symptoms, they are ill, and uh, it's difficult to treat people in these severe stages. Stage uh, one and two is uh, symptomatic mostly. People do not feel anything, and here we really require specialists, uh, uh, experts. Uh, so. As I see it, and this is my conclusion, the toxic substances uh, have an impact on cardiovascular diseases and also uh, they have an impact on harmonic system. Uh, they are destructive for the endocrine system and they also can develop uh, cancer. And so that is why preventive cardiovascular medicine I voiced last year uh, in summer during the International Congress. That was the summit in Marozov Hospital. After that, I spoke in Paris in October on preventive oncology. Uh, it, uh, the name of the presentation was Priority Cancer Genes. How not to uh, get ill with cancer. And I got nine invitations to different oncology congresses, including the one in Seoul. One of the organizers is here among the, our distinguished speakers. I also was invited to Houston to the Congress of Regenerative Medicine. Uh, so uh, I was invited to the congresses and all the continents and also in they wanted me to speak about the development of preventive oncology ideas clear enough it is absolutely clear people do not want to have cancer in Lomonosov University for 33 years I've been heading uh, a program on oncological uh, education where we carry out different projects on ecological and chemical uh, safety and security. <laughs> so I am ready to uh, to take part in the plan you are presenting here because I really like your idea. I absolutely agree with Professor Rothstein. This is the first and most important step. It is prevention. And I think if our people uh, know what toxic elements, benzapirin, toxilacrine, are uh, highly dangerous, what they should do if they uh, have contact with these elements. Uh, I have a report which is called uh, Good, Right and Wrong Drinks and Foods. And I discussed there the impact of different uh, foods and drinks to the human health. I think it's especially important that everyone knows uh, everything about it. So once again, let me highlight, I support all the ideas about preventive medicine, and certainly I would like to take part uh, in your work. Thank you so much. Uh, once again, let, uh, uh, why do we need the cluster? Uh, it is the uh, platform for different people to exchange their experience and points of view. So let's uh, get uh, to the future together, and let's be friends. One more question. Uh, 
Please into the mic. Thank you so very much for this session. I would like to ask rather Natalia and Mikhail, you've gathered a unique uh, international team. How realistic is it to get a Russian uh, institute or clinic uh, for these international rules um, without the limits we have in the Russian regulation? Number two question. How can the residents of Skolkovo, start operas of Skolkovo, launch a clinic there to have the first uh, successful cl cluster of the Russian clinic? Well, the law specifies the opportunity of both international and national uh, clinics. We've started uh, with uh, the international uh, participants. After that, we'll certainly have Russian clinics here as well. Thank you so much for this question. We have new opportunities for the Russian developers here. Uh, and they are also participants of uh, biomedical cluster. They work for uh, oncology, uh, early diagnosis, um, and uh, targeted approach. So the international protocols allow uh, to to issue some protocols on the Russian market uh, earlier. Sometimes uh, it happens that uh, the, uh, some medications are earlier approved uh, internationally abroad than here in Russia. So this is a unique opportunity for our researchers to uh, start doing the innovations, to use them uh, in, uh, within the framework of the current protocols. Uh, this includes uh, digital uh, means. Uh, thank you so much for this question. This is uh, clearly unique synergy we have between the Moscow medical cluster and the biomedical cluster of uh, uh, innovate, innovative international developers uh, for commercialization and for realization as early as possible. Thank you so much. Unfortunately, we don't have any more time. Uh, we've uh, done our best to make it interesting for you. I would like once again to thank the participants from Israel, from Korea, from France to have joined us. Thank you so much once again.